All right, so I know some of you fine folks are making cupcakes and ice cream and other things. Uh, I did want to do just a really quick bit on that. Um, so this is going to be, uh, and for the record, if you have me in my class or just in general, I am a cake crazy person. Um, I've made a lot of cakes in my life. I used to work at a bakery. Um, so I know what cakes look like. Anywho, uh, so <laughs> what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to start with the cylinder of, you want, an odd number, oh, I'm sorry, you want an even number of sides. And then I'm just going to scale these all in like this so you get the sort of goofy looking little whatever the heck this thing is. Um, quick thing, if you do, so, so a lot of a lot of piping tips or like ice, what am I saying? Uh, a lot of cake tips are sort of pointed towards the edges and adding, trying to like add edge loops to this as is, is the worst thing ever, it sucks. Um, so I'm gonna go insert edge loop tool. And you do it once, right? So I'm saying like I want like hard edges here. You do it once, that's fine. You do it here. If you do it again, then it's gonna like shoot across here and you just get a crap ton of extra loops. And it's super irritating. Uh, so I've found a kind of crappy cheat workaround for that. And that's just delete the top and bottom of this. Grab all the edges uh, or, you know, whichever edges you want to be uh, hard. I'm just gonna say I'll take the inside being kind of rounded uh, and just add a bevel to that and you know make that however large makes sense um, but then when you smooth that you get the the little bit like harder edges um, and then you are able to just go through extrude this uh, bring it in and then just do a merge to center and you get like a nice uh, nice little icing top that way um, so that's the quickest workaround I found for that so a few different ways that you can uh, that was stupid I should have added uh, okay cool all right I'm gonna show you a dumb thing because I did a dumb thing um, all right, so I'm gonna extrude the bottom. I'll just close that off again. Um, and what I was going to do is just show you like kind of the easiest way to do things. Um, and that is with a twist deformer. But to use a twist deformer, I need geometry in here, which I didn't put in because I'm a dingus. So what I'm gonna do, delete that. Uh, and I, I just, I like these to be equidistant because um, it makes things look a little bit nicer and neater. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the sides, rebridge them back together, and add a few divisions in there because I'm a cheater. <laughs> um, all right, great. So we have this. Um, and I'm just, actually, I'm gonna go for like, sort of like a, maybe a chocolate top cookie here or something. Um, so basically at some point this should taper off towards the top. So what I'm gonna do is go in and just add a, I always do this lattice deformers for some reason. You can do it with a taper. I just really like lattice deformers. Um, and actually, I'm going to add three on the Y. Um, so basically, then you can just go through and just be like, Moha! Yes, tinier top. And because I have this third one, if I want... Mm, okay. Uh, if I wanted to, I could sort of, like, smush this out and, like, pull that in. It just gets me a little bit closer to the shape I want, like, without having to go completely insane. Um, and soft select, it'll give you usually a smoother, rea uh, smoother effect than soft select. Um, so we have this. Looks kind of insane, kind of goofy. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, throw a little twist deformer on here. Uh, twist. Cool. So, and again, this is sort of like the sort of minimum thing. So now you have basically a really, really weird looking cupcake uh, twisty thing. Um, this is kind of like the minimum that I would do for a cupcake. And obviously in this case, I think some of my, some of my edges were like a little bit excessive um, in how ridiculously pointy they are. So what you can do, theoretically, um, I'd recommend, you know, maybe doing this later, but you could go through and just sort of scale these in a little bit. Um, and I'm just pressing control. So I don't want to scale along the Y axis. So I'm pressing control and using the Y axis, it's going to scale on the other two. Um, so that's how I'm sort of shrinking these. So you could do something like that. Then you have some janky ice cream or whatever. I don't even know what the heck. This is a terrible shape at this point. Um, and then if you, again, wanted to tweak the shape more, you could add another lattice deformer. You could go in, just like cheese it with a little bit of soft select um, to sort of get something cupcakey. Um, the other thing that you can do, so actually I'll just I'll leave that chilling in the corner. Um, so maybe that's a little bit too simplistic for whatever you're doing. Um, it works great for chocolate tops, honestly. I've done, I've made some little chocolate tops in the past. That was fun. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is go through and I will just delete I'm going to delete everything except this little bottom section here, uh, and clearly I've done something very not great to that, so I'm just going to kind of 
fudge them back into where I think they kind of maybe should be. Um, yeah, cool. We're gonna run with it. Alright, so like I said, what if you need something that's, you know, like a twisty ice cream cone where it's like piped in a circle or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna go in, do curve tool, CV or EP, it's gonna give me the exact same result. I'm just used to working with CV tools. And I'm gonna go in and just be like, cool, let me draw some kind of little swirl. Great. We have our ugly swirl. It's very ugly. It's delightful. Don't judge my ugly swirls. Um, okay, cool. So I'm just gonna kind of go through and make this a little bit more... Uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Um, I'm gonna make this a little bit more sort of vaguely shaped like a cupcake, and we're gonna say that, cool, this makes sense, and we're going to proceed as if this actually looks good. So what you wanna do, um, and this is, uh, I'm gonna modify center pivot. Um, this is the same thing that I've done in the past for doing stuff like barbed wire. Um, it's basically just gonna extrude this profile along this awful, awful curve that I've made. Um, so what you want to do is make sure that this piece of geometry is close to the end of your whatever this thing is and kind of make it, you know, whatever size you think you might need. In this case, probably kind of large because they made this really spaced out. Um, so then you want to grab your... I'm going to try a thing really quick. I'm actually not sure if it's going to work. Okay, cool. Um, so you have to, for some reason, still the case, grab the faces of this flat thing that you've made then shift select this curve, and then extrude like you normally would. I use the hotkey control E because I like hotkeys. Um, so you can see it looks pretty terrible right now. What you need to do is go in and add more divisions to this. And you'll notice that as you do that, uh, it's going in and actually basically tracing this along the curve that you've made. Um, so if you smooth this, you get this like really goofy sort of <laughs> like terrible looking ice cream effect. Um, so there's a few things that you can do to sort of modify this. If you go into your channel box and you open up this extrude face, uh, it is, there's some options for, again, like twist. Um, so this is going to basically give you, usually you will have to manually enter values for this. I'm going to try 3,000. Okay. I'm going to try 1,000. <laughs> Great. Um, so this is going to give you that sort of like soft serve swirly effect. Uh, maybe 2,000. I kind of, that looks insane. Okay. I should stop paying so much attention to these demo objects. But, um, so we get that. That's going to give you, again, that sort of soft swirly effect. Um, you can mess with the divisions. Uh, if you, for some reason, need more, you can enter that manually. Um, there's also taper. So this would be really nice for something like a soft serve, where, like, theoretically, it might get a little bit skinnier on the top. Um, I don't know if there's a way to go in and do a huge amount of controlling of that curve. I'm sure there is somewhere, I just don't know what it is off the top of my head. Um, but this could be an interesting way, again, just to give like a little tiny bit of variation to the whatever your, your object is. Um, so that's pretty much more or less that. Um, the only other thing that I really want to mention about this is it will still respond to your curve, right? So like if you if you're like, okay, I kind of like this as a thing, but like now it is not even, it's like not touching itself, like it looks uh, insane, it's not, you know, sitting correctly or whatever, you can go back and adjust the curve accordingly. Um, the other thing that you'll notice, let me make this like super, super obvious and super weird. Um, this is for some reason one of my biggest pet peeves with curves, but let's drag that up. Okay, so you will notice that if you, if you do something like I've just done, where you have uh, these little CVs like really far apart from each other, um, it's going to affect how this curves, which is a little bit annoying. Um, so basically, again, I'm going to go into my extruded face, and I'm going to go into my twist, and let's make this 3,000 again. Alright, so 3,000, you can see it's super twisty here, and then like minimally twisty here. Um, there is a way to fix that. Um, I usually recommend doing this once you're sort of happy with the overall shape of your curve. Uh, but if you go into curves and rebuild, pop that open. Um, usually I, for doing, for doing this, I'm going to leave the setting at uniform. Um, this is basically just, you know, how much of your curve you want this to operate on. Um, keep any of these things if you want to. Um, I leave the ends because I don't like it messing up the, the shape of the ends of the curve. Um, and then this is how many 
spans or CVs you want to go over your curve. Um, so in this case, I don't think I need 40, that seems excessive. Um, but basically, and you can redo this multiple times, right? Like if you mess it up, um, just control Z and undo it. Um, but you'll notice again, if you look at the curve, uh, that it is, once you do this, it basically repopulates your curve with uh, 21 evenly spaced CVs. Um, so it's going to do a little bit better job of distributing the twist. I don't know why that is, but like again, so watch watch like this area. We hit apply, and it's going to sort of make that a much more sort of even uniform twisting uh, for that extruded whatever we've just done. Um, so that's particularly uh, particularly useful for stuff like barbed wire where you need it to have like an even number of things in it. Um, but that is basically my janky tutorial on ice creams and cupcake toppings and nonsense like that. Um, like I said, I do recommend uh, rebuilding it. Like now it's going to be really hard to move this back down because we have so many CVs. So do kind of make sure that you, you know, like the shape of your curve at least most of what most of the way before you uh, you do that rebuild. Um, so the I guess the only other thing that I could mention is maybe putting sprinkles on this. It's it's pretty basic mash actually basically. Um, so I'll do that really quick. If you guys are interested, stick around. Otherwise, move on to uh, another video. But you should be good. So let me let me make a crappy sprinkle real quick. And when I say crappy sprinkle, I mean a cylinder with less polygons. Um, all right, so mash. I'm gonna make a little mash with my crappy sprinkle. It's glorious. Yay, crappy sprinkles. Oh, my weird little, as I call it, the mash outliner. And I'm gonna go in to, where is my distribute node? There we go. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do something maybe like more sprinkles. I'm just gonna make them all on top of each other and I'm gonna do distribution type for a mesh and scatter, sure, whatever, we'll figure that out later. Um, and I'm gonna grab this P cylinder three, apparently, grab that middle mouse button, drag it into my input mesh. And you can see that now we have sprinkles distributed very terribly on this. Um, I'm gonna make these a new material just so they're a tiny bit easier to see because for some reason my brain is just like, what are you doing with these? They're hard to see. Um, Blue sprinkles, yes, glorious. Um, so this is basically just gonna go ahead and throw sprinkles all over your mesh regardless of if it's like the center of the ice cream or not. Um, to be honest, this is actually where I stop sort of noticing um, things or like, I haven't tried to specifically do ice cream sprinkles before. Um, so there's some options that you can choose if you want. You can have these set to be only on the vertices, which is like really weird. Um, so depending on what you're doing, you can mess with these settings and see sort of what gives you the effect you want. In this case, I am partial to scatter. Um, you can also take off stuff like calculate rotation. So if you turn that off, it's going to stick everything directly up and down on the y-axis. Um, this is just going to kind of be based on the face. Um, so usually I would recommend if you're doing something like grass, turn that off because it'll leave all your grass pointing straight up as it would normally grow. For something like this, calculate rotation kind of feels reasonable. Um, so you should be able to go if you want, um, I believe there's actually somewhere to like make a map of like where you would want these to populate. Um, but you can also do stuff like add random nodes. Um, probably something not you, probably not something you want for position, um, but you could go through and add a little bit of rotation if um, for some reason like your sprinkles felt really in line with your mesh. Um, again, for something like an ice cream with this many polys, probably not going to be super noticeable. Um, if you wanted to, you could also scale your objects. Um, and in this case, it looks really weird to have these like crazy sprinkles scaled along a single axis. So you can take this uniform scale button uh, and that'll just give you a little bit of uh, variety in your sprinkle shape. Random seed, um, you know, just gives you a little bit of, um, you can a little more options in terms of like choosing how you want these populated. Um, and then there's some other random options you can choose for like strength where basically just, we'll just turn off your random node. Um, that looks very silly. Um, but yeah, so that's the sort of janky populating sprinkles. Um, honestly, I wouldn't worry too much about this um, if you have some sprinkles on the inside of your object, unless you're maybe adding so many that it like becomes an issue. Um, the other thing that you could do 
is also to sort of duplicate your object. Um, and this is not necessarily the best way to do this, but you can make just like a hidden object within this, basically, where like if I duplicate this and I say, it turns out I actually don't want sprinkles on all of this because that's just a weird stick in the sky. Um, you could delete that and then basically just like populate this with sprinkles. Um, it's kind of a janky way to work, but it's, you know, doable if you're just looking for like quick and dirty. Um, so <laughs> this is my uh, sprinkle and ice cream tutorial. I love that this is the object we end up with, uh, but hopefully some of you guys find that helpful.